The transition from undergrad to PhD programs or PhD programs to postdocs and postdocs to tenure track positions, all of these are really intimidating. And each one is a step that you take to transition from student all the way up to colleague. There are so many hurdles to go through, including, say, taking the GRE, applying to schools and jobs, figuring out what you are going to do with your life. And potentially more important than any of these is selecting the right letter writers for your letters of recommendation. The wrong choice can cost you the job. So what I'm going to do today is tell you why letters of recommendations still matter in 2020, how to ask for a letter of recommendation, and what a good recommendation letter even looks like. And I'm going to tell you a horror story of how a single letter of recommendation killed the entire career of somebody that I actually know. Why do letters of recommendations still matter today when there is a ton of quantitative data about everyone so readily available? If you have a 4.0 GPA and have done a ton of extracurriculars, will a letter of recommendation even make a difference? Well, the answer is yes. As far as graduate schools go, a PhD program is very different from undergrad. In the US, there can be some coursework, but ultimately the objective is to do research. Having great grades in undergrad is not necessarily an indication that someone will be successful at research or a new job. It, grades are an important indication of knowledge and understanding, but it doesn't communicate initiative, which is the most important part of any work that you do. This is what a letter recommendation can do for you. A letter from a professor that has lots of interactions with you, especially if you worked on an undergrad research project with them, can convey your personality and initiative to a PhD admissions committee or a company. That's why letters of recommendation are important. But the big question is who do you ask and how? Especially if you haven't done any research with a professor, you might not have an established relationship with any of the people that you've studied under. But first, let's look at a great and a terrible example of a letter of recommendation. So even if you are a student, you should know what a decent letter of recommendation looks like because many professors will ask you to write your own and send it to them. Uh, this happened to me and I totally froze up. I, when I read the letter I wrote now, it makes me cringe. It was so repetitive and it didn't really get to the heart of what's important about a student. Writing was always my Achilles heel until well, I got through graduate school. Okay, so a good letter recommendation should be several paragraphs long and it should speak to the recommender's experience with you. There are three things that a letter should address. The first, in what context does the recommender know you? Were you their student? Did you research with them? Or did you meet them in some other context, say many conversations in the hallway, or maybe you were an undergraduate or a graduate TA with this professor. The second thing is how did you perform? Were you the top of the class? Or maybe you were slower but showed a lot of grit and pushed through. Now, grit is really important in graduate school or any job context. The third thing is why do they think you are a good fit for the program? Here, the recommender can draw comparisons with previous examples of, say, excellent PhD students or postdocs that they've had, and they should mention how you fit into that new environment and your potential at, say, research and innovation. Now, this sort of outline really does work for any letter of recommendation, and not just specific for PhDs or graduate school. The more specific experiences included in the letter, um, the better. So now, that's what a good letter looks like. A bad letter? Here's one I saw when I was interviewing postdocs. All right, so for privacy reasons, I can't actually read you the exact letter, but I'll give you a, a censored version of it. Let me just go read it right now. Okay, so this is what was read to me. So this letter is to recommend blank to work as a postdoc or in a starting level position. I was on his PhD committee. He does work in this blank research area and he is qualified to work there. Sincerely, the professor who wrote this. So that is so short. It doesn't tell me how he conducts research, any of the details about the projects he actually worked on. It's all stuff I could have gotten just straight from the CV. There's actually nothing added here that I didn't already know uh, before coming in here. What I'm looking for in a letter of recommendation is more about the person's personality, the specifics of the research that they actually did, and this letter really doesn't tell me anything else about the candidate that I couldn't figure out already just by looking at his resume. And it's short. It is really short. I mean, this is literally one paragraph long. I expect to have a good page to page and a half of a letter from a letter writer. I, I want to know a lot about the candidate because I'm potentially going to be investing two to three hundred thousand dollars over the next, say, three years on this person. And so, yeah, that's, that's way too little.
that letter is abysmal. It says nothing outside of what can, I can see on an applicant's CV. I wish I could tell you that this was the only instance where I saw this, but I've actually seen this fairly regularly. I mean, I've seen this letter at every level. And you would never know because you waive the right to look at your letters when you actually request them. And I've known of letters a recommendation to have destroyed entire careers. And I'll tell you about that in a second. So who do you ask for a letter and how? Well, you want to consider three things before you ask for a letter. How well do they know you? How good was your performance with them? And how thorough is the person you are asking? That last one might be hard to judge, but you really don't want a letter like the one I just showed you. Now, you generally know which professors you know well. Uh, even if you are unsure, have confidence that the professors in your upper division courses or graduate courses have actually noticed you, even if you haven't really spoken to them much. Uh, they grade your work and see exactly how you did in class. They can at least speak to your coursework. Now, remember, not every letter writer has to knock it out of the park with you, even if you haven't asked done any serious work with them, as long as there's something that they can write about you, it could be good. And when you ask for a letter, be respectful, but don't be too nervous. It is part of our jobs to write letters for our students. A decent request should read something like this. Hello, Dr. Summers. I am going through the process of applying for PhD programs right now, and I really enjoyed my time in your classes. I would like to ask if you could write a letter of recommendation for me. In your abstract algebra class, I learned the discipline needed to succeed in mathematics. Your hard work and dedication to teaching and research has really inspired me, and the tools I acquired under your supervision have equipped me to succeed in a PhD program. I am particularly interested in studying analysis, and if you could speak to my abilities in this direction, then I'd really appreciate it. My first application deadline is on December 10th. Sincerely, Joel Roosevelt. Okay, so I might have gone overboard here, but it is important to remind them where they know you from and to tell them when the deadline is coming up. It's also helpful to ask your recommenders to include something that you feel might be helpful. So even if the recommender doesn't necessarily know you very well, you can still nudge them in the right direction and give them some points that you would like included in your letter, even if they are going to ultimately write it themselves. Uh, Dr. Summers was awesome, by the way. Terrifying, but awesome. I actually took a lot of classes with him. Now, how can this go wrong? Like, really wrong. So when I was in my second year of graduate school, I met a senior graduate student who was ready to enter the job market. He seemed really confident. He was working on some uh, variation of, say, the one of Hilbert's problems, and I think it had a lot to do with ergodic theory now that I'm graduated, I know what's going on, I had no clue what he was talking about back then. But he applied for a ton of jobs, both uh, you know, as instructors, uh, postdocs, uh, tenure track positions at smaller colleges, things like this. Uh, at least one of them he should have been able to land, but he didn't get any. He had no idea why for a long time until somebody came around and told him what was going on. And apparently his PhD advisor had actually written him a letter. And the letter boiled down to saying that this man should not have an academic position in any capacity. And yeah, you better believe that destroyed his entire career. So the initial launch that you make out of graduate school into a new position really will strongly determine where you're gonna to go to next. And you get very few tries to do it all over again. And so his initial launch really got him nowhere. He ended up teaching at a community college for several years and yeah, his career trajectory did not go where he thought it would go. And so one letter destroyed everything for him. In any case, I would like to thank you for watching the video. Uh, good luck in your own job application process. And I hope you have a good day.